It's muted. That's all right. right. And, <laughs> and just like that, welcome, guys, to another podcast. Let me turn this music off. Hold on. All right. So you can hear our voices. So you can actually hear what we sound like. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Che. Yeah. The JKT podcast. <laughs> it's right on the screen. <laughs> hey, look, look. I know. I don't know why I you messed put it, it up. there. Look, I don't know why I messed it up. Anyway, you guys know who it is. Of course, it's me, uh, J Nose Tech, and I'm joined back again with King Ken. We're gonna have to put a crown on your. Uh, on your thing. Good. I can just get a real see, crown or bring you, my crown from home. Actually. <laughs> oh, see, there yeah. we go. And as you guys can see, the panhandles are on the appropriate side this time. So <laughs> now we got to correct. We're getting, we're getting there. And as you guys can also see, we got something new in the background. Some, you know, acoustic foam. One's a little crooked, but don't worry about that one. Yeah. Uh, so he's unique. He's a, he's his own butterfly. Yeah. He he he's an individual. So <laughs> uh, anyway, we got a great segment for you guys today it's actually going to be kind of a short one uh hopefully we'll see uh, but we got some awesome news uh, of course we've got uh nvidia announcing their new graphics cards the rtx series not gtx get it correct mm -hmm. uh, we've also got some you know speculations of course of the ps5 uh, alexa is coming to you closer than just your regular appliances your home stuff and everything else like that it's we'll no. find out more on that as well mm -hmm. xbox or microsoft is could be releasing a new program that lets you rent an xbox with their services find out mm. more on that one uh and then of course we also have what did that did i cover i think i got it razor of course revealing their new controllers for the ps4 and mm -hmm. also the samsung galaxy note 9 review uh seems like it might be getting some really nice press we'll get a little bit to that more later on in the podcast but of course uh, just a quick announcement. This is live streamed on Twitch. So we do uh, so far we've been streaming every Wednesday for around six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So wherever that is for you guys, uh, that's the time when we usually go live. Uh, do apologize that we were a little bit late today. For some reason, the camera I'm using now did not want to cooperate. Mm. And for some reason, Windows 10 needed an update. So it's the Windows 10 curse. See, that's why I should have got a Mac. Should have got a Mac. Wouldn't have had this Should have got Linux. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. See, Linux is much better. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so. Chromebook. <laughs> no. The stream from that Chromebook. Please, God, no. <laughs> I saw somebody stream from a Chromebook. It was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't good. I'm not hating on Chromebooks, but please, no. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we are running a slightly late. Not, not by much, but, you know, nonetheless, we are here. We're ready. We're doing this news. We got it. Let's get in it. So. First off, as always, I always have to make a announcement, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over here. So, of course, every live stream at the beginning before we start, you hear some awesome fire. I lighten up the what is it, the canister with more. I don't know what I'm I, trying to I say. I don't know what you're going. I don't for. know what I was trying to say, but anyway. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, I want to give a shout out to Torio Beats. As always, he makes fantastic beats. So, if you guys are definitely interested in some of his work, he has reopened his SoundCloud. So. Right down there, you can check him out at soundcloud.com slash Torio Beats. Um, he didn't give me some fire this time, so I had to repeat a little bit. Um, yeah, <laughs> he just re-released it from the Disney vault, so you need to catch it while that you can. That's very true. Disney approved him to go ahead and release that, so mm -hmm. that's the reason why. But anyway. <laughs> see the new Little Mermaid? You'll see who wrote the yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> you'll see Torio Beats under there. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Hey, I know that, so... <laughs> Thank you, Torio Beat, so much for providing us with some awesome music. Like I said, every time we play or go live, the music that you hear at the very beginning and on all my videos is provided by him. So again, if you guys are curious, want to listen to what he has, make sure you check him out, show him some love. Definitely would appreciate it. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get right into it because we ran a little late. So let's go ahead and talk about the tech news. All right. Look at that. Look, you guys see that? I didn't know that. Look at that. That is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's my God, bless me, man. Hey, I'm the creativeness, I'm going to say. The controller, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm terrible at pointing right here. All right. Maybe you should replace it with the PlayStation to keep it mixed oh, up. Oh, yeah, see, got to yeah. mix it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rep, rep everyone. That's why I bring them along because, yeah. you know, we, he gives me the ideas that mm -hmm. I need. So we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and see. Can I do this, actually? Can I, I don't remember my, uh-oh. Uh, oh, that's no, right. You're failing I'm right using, now. I'm using, a di I'm using a different keyboard than the one. Wait, Grim, don't look. You're going to get him. Oh, please, Lady Grim, please. He's, he's going to own a PS4. Don't come I want in. A PS4. Don't come in. <laughs> please. Don't come into this chat. So we're going to go ahead and switch over. The first thing we're going to go ahead and talk about 
is the Galaxy Note 9. Now, if you guys didn't know, they Samsung announced their event last, what was it? Was it last Thursday? I believe, I believe it was. So. Yeah, it was last Thursday. Of course, the phone, I think, comes out now. I think August mm. 20th. It's either August or September. I, I totally forgot. I believe it's August, though. It's, it, we'll probably figure it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out by the end of this. But um, in other news, people uh, have their hands on it. Fortunately, I don't. I wish I did. That'd be great. And reviews are starting to come out. So this is just one review. This is from The Guardian. Uh, it looks like they gave it a pretty good rating. Uh, four stars. Uh, the do everything phone is what they call it. So basically, um, mm. from a lot of the reviews that we have here, um, basically the Galaxy Note 9 is back, um, mm. which is a really, really good thing. Why is my, you guys can't even see us. This is, this is the saddest day. Oh. Oh, oh well, oh well, <laughs> oh well. You saw you saw the fail anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so if you guys aren't aware, because the Galaxy Note has came out, it's got some nice specifications. Uh, bigger, a little bit of a bigger screen, about 0.1 inch bigger, so not that massive. Uh, here are the specs down here. So you have your choice of either the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 or the Exynos. Uh, six or eight gigs of RAM, depending on your storage size, which either has 128 or 512 gigs of storage. Uh, running Android 8.1 with a poor Samsung software on there, 12 megapixel camera. So, you know, very familiar face. Uh, a lot of people are praising it for the fact that it has really, really good performance, which is fantastic. I'm glad to see that they decided to increase the battery life on mm -hmm. the Note 9 because that was one of the issues that I had with it mm -hmm. um, was that it didn't have, you know, mass battery on the Note 8. Um, so and also glad that they fixed the battery explosion issues. Yes, thank yeah. thank God. Because yeah. <laughs> you don't have much of a battery life if it's gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if it burns in your hand, that's not the phone for you, unfortunately. <laughs> and I loved my Note Seven. So some would say this it. phone is fire. Okay. <laughs> Why did you do that, Ken? Why? <laughs> Why? Oh wait. So. Uh, and also the, oh. the pen is Bluetooth with it as well. That's a new feature yeah, as well. Yeah, so the, pen, ah, the S Pen now has a low, I think it's low Bluetooth power. So mm -hmm. it allows you to uh, do like um, play, pause music. Uh, what am I trying to say? Remote access to power, like PowerPoint and your camera, uh, which is nice. Now I have watched a couple of videos and some people have, you know, they said that it may not be something that they use all the time, but it's a nice feature to have. I have one guy, he was doing a video and he was saying how he was he eats food and he doesn't always want to touch his phone because it gets dirty. So mm -hmm. um, basically, that pen allows him to kind of be able to just still play, pause his content without having to actually touch the screen. So yeah. uh, I know you have that sexy Pixel with Android Pie, that slice of pie on uh, there. Pixel two, the same now. Pixel two, not the original, not, not the XL, not the original. You yeah, the Pixel. So it's just right. But you know, what are your thoughts on? The, the Galaxy Note 9 from what you've heard or seen. The features it. all sound really nice. And I mean, it's going to have 512 gigabyte storage is the maximum built in. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, then, it, that's then it, they have the audacity to say SD also can take an SD card. <laughs> what? What's the point of that? That's more than some laptops. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. They were like, they, were like, they oh. knew they would hear complaints if they didn't put it in there. That's very true. <laughs> so, um, oh, wow. um, it's a little weird. I mean, is that so... Is that processors, is that the choice of Samsung, which models have which one, or is it a separate um, purchase? Or? So, yeah, so with the Snapdragon 845, that's the U.S. variant, and mm -hmm. then everybody else gets the Samsung Exynos, which gotcha. is the international. And I also found out that the colors mm -hmm. um, are only the coral blue and the lavender in the United States. Everywhere else gets quartz coral blue, lavender, and then they also get the black and the copper which makes me very mad. That's because. really weird that you wouldn't get a like a black color in the U.S. That's a standard color for phones in general. I, I said the same thing. I was wondering, I'm like, why did you not release? They normally do release the black variant, and then the other, the colored ones are like, okay, yeah. But yeah, those are the exclusive ones usually. Yeah, they, they kind of didn't do us right on that. So um, I don't, I don't know why they – I was very sad because I want the copper one because the copper metal looks really nice. It yeah. kind of has like those – with, it, it depends on the picture because some pictures show it as like a red. Some pictures show it as like gold brown. I don't really know what to believe because I can't actually see it. Um, I'm hoping it's the red because I've been asking for like a reddish styled phone. I think right. that'd be pretty cool to have some, something a little bit different. You could have got the red iPhone then. Uh, the product red. Yeah, yeah, but it's iPhone. Oh, well. Come on. I can't get pie on, on iOS. Come on. I can only get you iOS. You can eat a pie, pie over top of it. <laughs> and then that, that'll that be more fulfilling. You don't need pie. You need Android <laughs> pie. You just need a regular pie. Hey. Just put up, I'm okay put with Put up point. an iPad and be like, can I get pie on this? 
You might as well use it as a plate at that point. It's apple. <laughs> okay, you, you got a point. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna go into an Apple store and be like, yeah, can I get an Android Pie on this? They're like, no, no, you can't. I'm like, watch this. Instead of Android Pie, can I just get some cherry? You, yeah, cherry, cherry uh, apple can pie. I, can I get a product red pie <laughs> <laughs> with the red aluminum casing wrapped around it? <laughs> and it's just a black top. It's like, what is this? It's the iPhone 8 in pie form. Come on. <laughs> but um, what's the what was the final price point on it again? Um, so the final price point, I believe the 128 gig version starts off at $9.99. Uh, so I think this is in euros. It is in euros. Yeah, it's in euros, but it's $9.99 for the 128 gig model or twelve forty nine for the t for the 512 gig model. Mm. Uh, now, one of the things was is of course that is very that's I think that is officially now the most expensive phone that we have yeah. next to the iPhone 10. But I will say that I think for the money, if you are gonna spend a thousand dollars. <laughs> might be better to go with the Note 9 than the iPhone iPhone 10. That's just my opinion because you get, for the price you get, one, you get crazy amount of storage. I mean, that's ridiculous. 512 gigs. I mean, that's good for somebody who is a power user, but you know, <laughs> that's still a lot of storage <laughs> on there. So uh, I'm going to switch back over here. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a lot of storage that you're getting. A lot of features that you're also getting as well. Bigger battery. So the Galaxy, I, I always praise the Note 9 for being you know, the one to kind of innovate. And I think Samsung had a period where, you know, there was innovation, but it wasn't like what it used to be. Like Samsung was kind of known for doing things that were like, whoa. And I think after like that Note 7 fiasco, I think it kind of, they they kind of stepped back for a minute, kind of mm -hmm. let everything kind of digress, calm down, relax. And then once, you know, everything was good, they started getting back in production. So right. I'm glad to see that Samsung's pushing the Note series forward. Um, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know if they're, if after this, if the note, how well the note will do to determine whether or not they continue with it. Um, yeah. I do hope uh, whatever direction that they go, um, whether it, because I think they're going to unify it mm -hmm. and make it just one, one name mm -hmm. under it. I want to say correctly if I remember, uh, but I'm not too sure. So, but I mean, I hope they succeed as well. I mean, there's a lot of people who like the Samsung product and the phone series in general. There's a lot of people who just swear by it. Mm -hmm. um, so, but they're a great company, so I don't foresee them having any issues or anything. Yeah, same here. And I mean, it, the, the phone is really good for somebody who is looking to, you know, who's a power user. Mm -hmm. So if you do everything on your phone, this is a, this is to me a great great. This option. is the option for you. This probably. is a great option. Of course, some people are like, I'm going to wait until the new iPhones come out. I'm like, Unless they're gonna do something that I don't know, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Of course, we'll you know we'll cover that here. Yeah, you know, when it happens. When it when the event. I won't happens. own one, but I'll still talk about it. Yeah, I I, I had like I play with the iPhone 10. I play with the Galaxy Note 8. Um, I have both the Note 8, the Samsung S9 Plus, and then I had the iPhone 10 as well. And out of all those devices, to me, I still love the Note. Like. I only went for the S9 Plus because it was new. I wanted to play with it. Right. Um, but the Note to me is it's it's a really great device. The only, like I said, the battery was a little bit not great mm -hmm. just because it's it wasn't it's 3300 versus you know what they used that what they did on the Samsung S9 Plus which was I think 35. Mm -hmm. um, but the phone itself was fantastic, and you know I have no doubts that the Note 9 will you know do fairly well. And you know from what it seems like, it seems like that a lot of people are starting to give it praise. Because it's now getting back to where what it was before. Of course, it'll never be how it was at the beginning, where you could take the battery out and do all that. Oh yeah, no, that will never. It, that's it, that's gone. That way the, of life is over. Get used to the aluminum body. That's we're not getting that back again unless you get like a flip phone or a rugged phone. Even those are starting to go out of style. So <laughs> um, it, unless you're into that, then yeah, we're never gonna go back to that. But I think for what it's Dang. able to do. Once you go Nokia, you don't go back. Oh god. I, you know, it's funny. I have the Nokia 3310 in my drawer. I will, I'm will. i not going to get it because it's too much work. But next podcast, I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to show it to you because I have it. That's a threat. People. It's a threat. Yeah, I'm going to show it to you guys. Nice. No, anyway. It's a nice way to say that. I don't think let's so, continue. Man. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, on, on to the next news. So we're going to go ahead and branch forward and we're going to go... Still in tech news, but now we're on the, more so the gaming side. So this is going to be a, a... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm just messing up all day. It's a PlayStation 4 controller from Razer. Yes, Razer. Now, 
what is it about Razer that is so good that I cannot get away from them? Everything I'm owning is starting to become Razer. The colors. That's that it. is true. They do yeah. have like the best illuminating devices. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know what they put in there. Like moth to a moths to a flame. That's what we are. That is that that's very but true. moths to expensive peripherals. That that's is, that that's is, what it more is like. That is very true. Um, nonetheless. Uh, Razer did reveal a new high-tech PS4 controller. Uh, now, they did really say a controller before. I think that was a universal one, so it worked for mm -hmm. everything. Um, I don't know if this is specifically only going to... For what it seems like, it is going to be specific to PS4, but it might be universal to PS4 and PC, normally with uh, mm -hmm. manufacturers. That's how it works. Um, but it's called the, Ra the Raishu? I want to say, I, say I said that correctly. Is it called the Raishu? I believe so. Let's see. It's right there. <laughs> I think that's Raiju or Raihu. Raiju. Yeah, I don't know how to say that. Nonetheless, uh, they're coming out with two versions. They're mm -hmm. coming out with the Tournament Edition and then the Ultimate Edition. Um, like I said, if you guys are ever interested and, you know, wanting to get more information, um, you can definitely check out the websites here that we show on the streams so you guys can look at that and kind of read a little bit more in depth. All right. Um, yeah, but definitely. here's what the controller looks like. It actually looks like a very nice controller. Like, I like the touchpad on it, definitely. Of course, it's Razer. They had to put RGB on there, so. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to see if it says anything. This is pretty much the PlayStation equivalent of the Wolverine, the Xbox One. Oh, yeah. they, made a one they made one for the... Well, yeah, we, after this, we can look it up oh, and see Oh, okay, it. I didn't know that. They have an Xbox One. I believe it works on PC also. Oh, that's, what? Oh, man, I need to go buy, I need, I gotta go spend some money now. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think, I don't think I can get a bigger, better picture. No, but no, uh, nonetheless, I actually like the way this looks. This is a nice design. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the lighting is always, RGB everything, guys. That's, that's the rule. If you don't mm -hmm. RGB, you're not gonna get my money. That's the same, so. Uh, but some of the specifications that it has, um, multi-function buttons. Uh, it's got a mecha tech tile triangle circle X. So basically, all the stuff that you get on your PS4, uh, and then a little bit extra, so you get that RGB. Uh, it is a little bit of a bigger body from what it seemed like. And well, what, was it that was that the only picture they had? I think so. Is it only uh, right here? And but, they have a video. Yeah, so it looks like it's a little bit. It's definitely a much bigger than a standard PS4 controller. Mm -hmm. um, so. But I think it looks nice. I don't know if you could play PS4 or not. I've had before. I've had one at one point too, just not. Recently, Not recently, but I was trying to see if it um, if it worked for PC. I didn't see. They anything. haven't said anything. It doesn't say up there. Okay. Yeah. I would I'll, imagine I'll it should work for PC because it look it has a micro USB connector. Maybe. Maybe so. But that could be just used for charging because it's a True. wireless controller. True. I know you can't like with a regular PS4 controller. I know you're able to play use it on PC, but the way you got to do it is a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. a little bit weird because you got to send out Bluetooth and you got to do all this extra stuff. Versus the my, just, my Xbox. Just, just, just get the... Just if you get, want to make it easier, get the... Get the Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. We'll look it up real quick. Go ahead if you want to look it All up right, real quick. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Yeah, because I don't... I don't know. I think it's the Razer Wolverine. Razer Wolverine. Let me... Let me look it up. Wolverine Tournament. Oh. Oh, yeah. And it has, of course, the switches on the back of it and everything, too. Oh, so it's a common... It's like a... Basically, an elite controller. Mm -hmm. It's the Razer version so of the elite controller. Well. So that's the Wolverine one. Okay, so this is it is for both Xbox and PC. I believe they have two versions of this one as well. But yeah, this one works on both PC and Xbox. Oh, I like that. And it's got a, a built-in. Mm -hmm. There's the top. Oh, you can click that there. See the top portion and everything. Oh, it actually yeah. has your two. I think there's a three, three, uh, six buttons at the top, and then you have your triggers on the back of it as well. Oh wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, now, if you had to choose, which one would you go for, that or the PS4 one? If they both could work on PC. Uh, I mean, they both are very identical to each other as far as the look. So, I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know. I don't know. That, that is, go that is go back to the PlayStation one real quick. Uh, got to get that mental image right there got, in my head. I got you. Let me, let me, let me head back. Got to get that picture. and Scroll down and see the picture. There you go. I think... I need to see a better image of this before I make a decision. I got you. Let me, let me, oh, we're going to look it up. Okay, we're going to do gonna, some in-depth searching. We're going to do some in-depth searching right here, right now. The What is it? The Raiju? Raiju. Raiju. R-A-I. R-A-I. J-U. J-U. PS4. Can be, yeah, there you go. How is that? Oh. Uh, it doesn't have the, the lighting on it, but... No, I want the lighting. That's how you determine whether or not you want you would choose that over the other. Oh well, I guess it's not going to. You just type in RGB with it. Oh, that's true. RGB. 
Wow, they are. Re- oh, there it is. All right, cool. We got it. Um, That's the best picture I can get. <laughs> it's kind of blocky looking compared to the Xbox One. Yeah. Like it. Go up real quick. It, Go back to it. Switch. It keeps the form. It, yeah, it's it's much bigger, much wider. I don't like it. I like the Xbox One better personally. Yeah, yeah. The Xbox is a little bit sleeker because it takes the form of the controller. I think yeah. this one is just like boom. On the bottom, it's just very rectangleish. On the bottom, it doesn't look like it's as comfortable for your hands. If you do the Xbox One, mm-hmm. it looks like it's easier for yeah, your hand to hold it. It does. I I agree. So, uh, yeah. I mean, plus it'll be a lot easier to connect it with PC than mm-hmm. a PS4 controller. So, if anything, I would probably definitely say. <laughs> that's why go with that one if you're if you're a pc or xbox gamer of course that's gonna be the one but i mean playstation like play- 4 playstation 4 now gets some love too you know yeah from yeah. razor razors they've been cool. getting a lot of love from razor because i believe they've always made fight sticks that work with uh playstation as well oh i didn't know yeah that. they have okay. they have fight sticks on their website they sell too that's pretty cool mm-hmm. uh, i didn't I, I didn't know that mm-hmm. um, but i mean razor seems like it's, it's starting to blow up even more yeah because i remember, i know people hate on razor because their customer support which i don't really necessarily use yeah i've never um, had to use it either so i never really had to use it so i mean for me i mean i, I don't even know what i think i got the the black widow without the num keys mm-hmm. uh, i think that's what it's called and that works perfectly fine for me i recently got the um huntsman elite and i never had, had no problem the only problems i've had with it is not the keyboard itself it's the software where sometimes it'll install like a third party app, which will mess up my lighting mm-hmm. that I've yeah. set up. So I have to redo it sometimes. Yeah, that's an asset software. It's always, so it always has an update, mm-hmm. which I don't know. Nah, Cause I guess the, the stuff I have is always is a beta. Mm-hmm. So it only can use the beta software, which I don't really like. Cause it's always like, if my keyboard doesn't work, I have to go into the synapses software in order to determine, okay, I got to actually update it. So I'm like, come on, Razor, find a better way or release it. I don't know what y'all doing, but y'all getting on my nerves. Yeah. I still like your products. Trust me. <laughs> I, I'm still, I'm getting the Huntsman Elite and I'm probably going to get the Hyper Flux X. Mm-hmm. I've been looking to get a wireless mouse and keyboard, but I haven't determined if I want to go Logitech Corsair or Razor. So we'll have to see what happens there. You'll probably see in, in some future video so yeah um, but yeah so if ps4 lovers now get some love with the ps4 razor controller so if you guys are interested you guys can definitely go ahead and get that when it releases i don't think there was a it said a release date or not i think it was just kind of talking about the fact that razor announced it mm-hmm. um i know they also announced some new headsets for the ps4 um i think the thresher got a update to it mm-hmm. uh, which is also which was nice i mean that the headset looks massive though like goodness yeah those razor headsets usually are pretty big yeah i think it's like massive like wow (laughs) it's meant to block you out from the world you have a child not anymore (laughs) you can't hear (laughs) your child's in the tub you're not gonna hear them right oh god i can see how many uh, (laughs) many wives are gonna be your carbon monoxide alarms going off well (laughs) i hope you like this life it's over with is there a fire in your building how would you know you're immersed in (laughs) horizon dawn so (laughs) the god jesus that's not good (laughs) <laughs> so they they made them big but whatever so speaking of ps4 what's better than the ps4 and a razor controller a playstation 5 yes and that's exactly what we're gonna get, talk about next <laughs> next article comes from tech radar this is about the playstation 5 <laughs> what can we expect a when new, will they release it? a new number on it well that is very true You're five instead of four what's the difference between four and five one yep yeah See, we're, we're and remember, good. one one is a good number. Even if you're by yourself, you can make do. Don't worry. You don't need anyone else in your life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making it. Right. True. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. So the PlayStation 5. <laughs> um, so looks like we're getting ready to get have the end of the life cycle for the PlayStation 4. So, of course, obviously, what's the next best thing to do? To talk about what the PS5 could contain. Um so there's been many rumors about what the PS5 will have. Um, one of the big ones that I was interested in was the fact that it could potentially have Ryzen in there. Um, just because I know AMD works with both Microsoft and PlayStation to create these consoles with the graphics side. So a Ryzen would be, you know, also nice in, mm-hmm. in there. You know, that would be great. But since we are coming up on the life cycle, speculations and rumors are coming up. Um, so, of course, as far as the release date, uh, we necessarily don't have something confirmed. Um, they're estimating maybe ne- next year or 2021, um, but of course we'll have to wait and see um, as we get closer and closer to when the PS4 will be released. Mm. I mean, the PS4, PS5, my God, I'm sorry, PS4. God, Where are we Jesus. at? What year are we in? What are you talking about? I don't know, man. It's, it's old. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Now, there was a video that was out there that kind of showed like a concept of what the PlayStation 5 would look like. And it kind of looked like a PS4 Pro, just <laughs> a little bit bigger, bigger, and then in white. Um, so, I, don't, I don't know how accurate that is. I'm though. still saying they should make it to the original PlayStation 1 design. Go back to the classic look. I mean, they're on this remake. I mean, might as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. Um, so yeah, again, no official words, but you know, like I said, we're looking some within the next three years is when we're looking at potentially having a new PlayStation. I know Microsoft is also looking at releasing their own co- new console soon because mm-hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure the Xbox One S is about to go, Ugh, and then they're gonna go. Ugh. And they still got their Xbox One X out too. That is true. Yeah, yeah. the most powerful console, but not more powerful than a PC. And, hey, Think about it. It guys. just depends how you build your PC. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. So, that is very true. So I'm running um, Minecraft on my my Celeron, you know. Oh God, please! <laughs> well, Minecraft can run on anything. I've seen it run on like an atom, and I'm like, Ugh. you call that running? Though? I mean, it's walking at it's a crawling. Lag, at a gapped pace. It's like uh, uh, like that. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> it can run. That's when they say, "Can I play Minecraft on this?" It can do it. It can exist. It can, yes. it, but you're not. Your field of view is going to be trash. You're not going to be able to see what's in front of you. I remember when I had my Oculus. I tried out Minecraft in VR. It was oh. pretty fun. It was. Yeah. When did you get a VR? Oh, you tried VR. I, I know. I had one at one point, but I got rid of it. Oh, what? I didn't use it enough. What? Yeah. What? what? No. That's you keep it. <laughs> that's exactly why you keep it because you don't use it as much. So when, when you're like, "Hmm, I want to try this in VR," you can just look over like, "Oh." Let me get no, it. <laughs> no, I know they're like, man, I wish I had someone to play VR. Let me call Jeremy or something. He'd love to try VR out. That's what it is. <laughs> Please do next time. I got the PC now to build it. So <laughs> I would love I'd love to play some VR. I'm you, actually looking to get one. You can go get the Vive Pro, you know, this the uh, one at like twelve hundred dollar one. Oh god, that's so expensive. I have I mean, that's a lot of money for VR. I mean it's, hey, that's a Vive Pro or the RTX twenty eighty Ti. I'm gonna have to go with the RTX. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to like I, I I love I love VR, but I love graphics cards more. So why would I not go with the obvious choice? <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, we we don't have much information about the PlayStation Five, but it it, it is it is trickling down. We're getting some seasonings of you know some mm-hmm. things that some it could fish be, flakes, some potentials of what it could be. Um, I don't know. Do you think you'll you'll buy any new consoles from here on out? Yeah, I mean, I might. I'm, there's still exclusives, or it depends, I guess, on how things go from here. But I'm, I still would. Hmm. Yeah, they're I, just easier sometimes. I feel like the way it's gonna go. Well, I mean, of course, Sony. Sony's gonna be like, uh, uh what do they? What's the term I'm trying to say? They're gonna still try to hoard. Yeah, keep it stuff for themselves. So of course, yeah, of course, you know, they they're not letting crossplay work. So. Exactly. So <laughs> they're only out there for themselves. So right. So, but. The way I see it is that, especially with like, and I mean, this may not happen, but like with Microsoft specifically, mm-hmm. that anything that you're going to be able to do on your Xbox, if you have a PC, you'll be able to do it on PC. Yeah. So it's like, if there's an exclusive, well, I mean, you're obviously going to get that on, you know, your PC and Xbox. I honestly think, well, they still want to do consoles, obviously. They believe in the console market, but I believe, yeah. honestly, they should just um, maybe team up with Valve or something and make just it for a PC market. That would make more sense for me, but it would just, it's yeah. just not cost effective for some people. Yeah. And I mean, plus, I mean, you, I, and I guess with the fact that Steam or unless Val- they, unless they started making Xboxes just have come with Windows 10 on it and run it as a computer and then oh, they could nice. um, use like, Steam on it and everything then. Oh, so kind of like a, oh, that'd be pretty interesting. A, they have a, or like you can have like the Xbox software. So if you want to go or, oh, or you have it in a mode. Well, they already have, I um, like, think of, like, the Xbox app. That's already on PCs. But think of, yeah. like, a stripped-down version of Windows 10 that's only on a specific console that has access to different gaming, like, download libraries like Steam, right. the Xbox Store, stuff like that. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, e, um, I'm, EA Store, you know, all that stuff. Not any much. Go, go okay. You, not anyone likes EA. Don't, don't worry about hey. that. But Yeah, EA. See, you screwed up at uh at the event. What was that hey. event? We, hey. Just think of it this way. They taught us something. 
We're going to do some JKT microtransactions. Here we go. You want to see the rest? You want to see that on that panhandle on the bottom? Pay $5. If you don't pay $5, you're just going to see you're going to see FIFA all day. You're going to see you, people kicking soccer You want to see the bow tie? That's a $2 oh, charge. That I can't cover it now. See, now. You can't see that's $2. You're going to have to click the link to get that to pay for it. Otherwise, you're not going to see this bow tie. That's how we do microtransactions everywhere. It's mm -hmm. like, "Hey, that's a nice wall microtransaction." <laughs> that's exactly you, how it's going You like happen. seeing the curved one or the not straight one? Microtransaction, yeah. yeah. You see that? Look at that. That's, That's too much. free. It's only it, it's nothing free anymore. It's a freemium service we offer here. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch me and look yeah. at me, you're gonna have to pay for it. It's just how it is. I can't I can't do something I can tell you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but, but um yeah, I know PS4. Of course, I mean there's a place for the market for for consoles because not a lot of people feel like dealing with PCs. Um, I mean, it'd be cool to see eventually everything kind of merge where you can do like a like a different like a mode where it's one unit, but it can be it can be your console and your PC at the same time. That'd be pretty mm -hmm. dope. Yeah. Uh, but then again, it probably would, there probably are reasons why that's not a thing. So maybe we're just maybe we just have to create it. We're just ahead of the game. That's yeah. the problem. We're we're thinking too far, and we, all the manufacturers are like, can you stop that? We're we're doing this. We're in progress. We just got to create it. We got to steal their software right. and create it ourselves. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go into the Microsoft lab and get the information. And be like, can I got it? Let's is go. It, Mission you, impossible. Do you work here? <laughs> Smoke bomb. <laughs> that's, the first, that's the first question. Do you work here? Um, yeah. Let me see my Microsoft badge yeah, as it's drawn in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> that's what you do. You slowly lift up a picture of your Xbox. You're like. You're like Welcome aboard. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and go on to the next news. So um, the next news is coming from The Verge. Now, before we talk about it, do you use any of the assistants out there? I have Google. I have Google, Google Home. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't refer to you. I have Google. No, 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 no. I didn't. But if for all you guys who are using Alexa and using Windows, you may eventually see something interesting happen. So... Amazon Alexa is going to be coming to Windows 10 PCs. Now, this is going to open up a, I think, a nice opportunity for Windows. Um, so basically, everything you could do with Alexa, dots, taps, echoes, all that's, all those devices, you would be able to do on your PC. So they are going to be te teaming up. I believe they're going to be giving a, they're definitely giving Microsoft's Cortana a run for her money. Um, but I think now there is an application that you can get to try it out. Mm -hmm. um, but it is coming to PC soon, so we are going to be receiving it as an update. I think they're, what they're going to do is it's actually going to be purely integrated. So um, we do have manufacturers, HP, Lenovo, Aces, and Acer that are going to be starting to integrate Alexa into the actual system themselves. So uh, I think this is going to be – this is kind of a nice little upgrade for Windows computers um, right. just because now – all the functionality you would be able to do on your Echo, you can now do on your PC. So if you want to turn your lights, now you have some way to actually do that. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a nice little merger and a nice integration uh, to be able to do it. Uh, of course, Google assistants have been blowing up with uh, the minis uh, from Google. You've got some for Cortana and then, of course, the Amazons as well. So I think it's a nice little addition. So kind of just shows you a little bit of what you'll be able to do of course there is going to be an app that you'll be able to press and you know you can do like hey alex and things like that as well right, yeah, um, of course cortana is still going to be there um but let's face it who uses cortana yeah be honest uh so it's a good partnership uh they of course they announced it last year so i think this is something that i'm sort of excited for um they're definitely trying to make windows 10 a <laughs> well a worthy platform. Yeah, I was just say I may not use Alexa, but I mean it's going to be better than Cortana, so yeah. it's a good option instead. Yeah, I mean, I like you said, we both use Google, so I mean necessarily for me, you know, it would have been nice to see the Google Assistant come. That would be probably cool. eventually. Maybe, maybe they're gonna all have the assistants. It'll come to the Chromebook, so we got to get a Chromebook. Oh God, you and this Chromebooks, man. Look, it's the future. It's not. <laughs> It's the, the future of kids. The future is now, old kids man. Kids are gonna come to me. <laughs> hey, man, I run. I have a Chronebook built PC. I'm like, oh, why? I have a Chromebook and I'm looking to play Half Life Three on it. <laughs> I was like, hey, when is that game coming out? I'm like, I don't know. When it yeah, does, though, I have the beta of it. Oh my god, that one little kid is gonna be the bane of my existence. <laughs> He's gonna come in with a Chromebook trying to play Minecraft. Like, I can do it too, and I'm like, you're a few to view though. It's at like literally. Five percent. You can't do anything, kid. Back off. God. Chromebooks. No. Your deep hatred of Chromebooks. I don't hate them. I mean, I like the Pixelbook. I just would put Windows on it. It's just 
Look, that's just me, you know. Yeah. I know that's not its intent, but I put windows on it. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of that story, you know. Because the Pixel Book, I think the Pixel Book is nice. That, and I think they have like an H, there's an HP mm -hmm. uh, tablet hybrid that's pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but as an operating system, I, I tried using Chromebook before. I, I think I just need to really like hammer down on trying to use it because it's hard for me to use use it because I come from Windows. Everything I do is Windows based. So it's a good secondary device, but yeah. when you come to me saying, man, Chromebook is, all, is life, I'm going to be like, what are you talking about, sir? Mm -hmm. you, you, can I speak to your manager? <laughs> uh, so. uh, yes, you can. Puts out Chromebook. Right. He's right here. <laughs> it's the guy, the CEO of Google, be like, I hear you have a problem with my Chromebooks. I'm like, no. You sure? Like, no. <laughs> can I speak to your manager? <laughs> I am the manager. It's like, dang it. Um, so, yeah, but let's just come into Windows 10 PCs. Glad to see it. Uh, Windows, went, my, well, Microsoft is really trying to make Windows 10 a unified system because of that bad experience with Windows as an operating, as a phone operating system. Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of their way of like slowly, I think Microsoft will at some point, they're going to come up with a phone again. They're going to be yeah. like, Windows 10 phones are back. And I'm like, what? Because I feel like this is kind of their way of, their way of doing it. It's like if they can get people um, to necessarily go start you know using windows 10 after developing applications for windows 10 and mm -hmm. because windows 10 is literally now you know both on your computer and now your xbox and they're trying mm -hmm. to make everything work cleanly together i think it's only a matter of time before they actually integrate or make windows 10 phones again because when they i think what they're i mean this is just a guess and speculation but mm -hmm. for me if they were going to do it the way I would do it is to definitely, you know, get my Windows 10 to the point where it's got it's all the kinks are fixed, fixed. Um, a lot more people are using it. Uh, there's more applications in the Microsoft Store to be able to kind of bring substance because, mm -hmm. of course, you have Windows 10 S, which depends heavily on the Microsoft Store. So being able to have developers make applications for that or app versions, mm -hmm. I think it would be a matter of time before once they have a good good amount of apps and then the platform is pretty stable, they'll put that on a mobile phone and then that'll be Windows 10 Mobile. Yeah. It'll actually have everything. Because Windows, you can use Windows, you, there are Windows 10 phones out there, um, but they're expensive. One is, well, not, not all of them, but like one is like from an H, I think it's like the HP Elite that mm -hmm. phone is like 700 bucks it, mm -hmm. it uses windows so i mean it's not something you would go out and buy spend your money on but i think if anything if they were to do that and um they're actually microsoft's going to stop support for their um i think that i know when their computer windows 8 computers all, there will be no more apps being added to their store no, as of november it was like what? yeah windows right. 8 is still supported and phones are going to be around the same time no more apps will be added to their store as well they're going to discontinue support for them eventually Okay, I mean, seems like the proper cycle. I mean, XP Vista seven yeah. now eight, mm -hmm. um, which I don't need. I know why some people would still use seven, but I don't know why anybody would still use eight unless. It, well, I mean, if you're one of those people that have just never upgraded your computer and you bought a Windows eight computer, yeah, I can see that. But I mean, somebody who's like, oh, I like Windows eight, I've never really heard that. Mm -hmm. like, that's because it's not real. It is. It, what is Windows eight? Come on, that's you skip the generation. Yeah, it's the picture book. <laughs> Oh, Essentially, the tiles. Oh, true. Are your picture book? <laughs> That's fair. Oh God, please! It's new Chromebook. Microsoft was ahead of the time before Chromebooks became a yeah, thing. They invented the original Chromebook. God, oh, Jesus! Why Microsoft? Why did you do this to us? Why? Why didn't you? Windows 10 S. Can this be a thing now? <laughs> it is, but uh, nonetheless, good job on Microsoft. I'm glad to see. I, I like the idea that they're trying to make everything work coherently on all systems together. Um, especially with PC, because now you have built-in integration for live streaming, or of course on their uh, platform mixer, you have like the Xbox app, which is actually a lot cooler than I thought, because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know that you can actually, if you're playing a game on your Xbox, I didn't know you could actually chat through the app. Yeah. Until I actually chatted through the app, and I was like, oh, you can do that, because mm -hmm. I, I I think one point when I tried using when I tried to do it, I couldn't do it before, um, but that's actually pretty cool that you can just chat right through the app so you can kind of save some time on being able to talk to your friends on your PC and then just play on your Xbox. Of course, you can stream your Xbox to your PC as well if you want to do that. Um, but nonetheless, I think, you know, they're definitely starting to kind of get some get there. I think a lot of people 
kind of dog Windows 10 a little bit. They hate it because it's a little bit new. Um, I don't think it's bad. I think there's a lot of stuff that just needs to be improved as far as optimization. I can't really say it's new anymore. That's an excuse people can't use anymore. It's been out for a long time yeah. now. And it's honestly not that hard to use at all. No, it, it, it's really not. Like a lot of the stuff that Windows 10 has, I don't use like probably 80% of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use uh, Cortana or the search file. Mm -hmm. um, I do use Task View from time to time, but I find that even for what I do, I, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use this game uh, game mode. I really don't see performance improvements based off. Of I that. use the um, the record quick clips. I do that sometimes because yeah, two commands to do that. That's a nice. That's a nice one because I think it's like Windows like Windows G to do it. Um, G or R. R. I think it's G though. Okay, I think I thought I think it might be G if I remember correctly, but. Uh, I, 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 for me, anytime I see somebody like I, Windows 10 sucks, I wouldn't say it sucks. It to me, it's a lot better than what Windows 8 was, and I mm -hmm. think they knew that when they made Windows 8, like it got a lot of hate. So I think to me, that's probably been next to Vista, one of the worst platforms they've created, worst operating system, excuse me, that they've yeah. created. Windows 10 is one. It's one of those things that because Microsoft is trying to make it pretty much, it's one OS for all their stuff. Mm -hmm. It just has a lot of stuff that needs to be worked out. And I think over time, it's definitely improved. It's gotten a little bit better. They're finding different ways to, you know, make it faster, um, add new features such as, you know, being able to add like Alexa to your system. So I think it's definitely a lot better yeah. um, than what it was when it first came out, which I mean, if you got it when it first came out, of course, you know, it was definitely not the greatest sit experience, but it was when it first came out. So. It's still better than eight. Yeah, first came out. <laughs> I mean, it's still better than eight. I mean, come on. I mean, now I I'll be honest with you. I don't know why they brought like the Metro UI like mm -hmm. design to the start menu. That that's just yeah, that's, that's unnecessary. That I don't find any use for that because I'm just gonna search for the game or add it to my taskbar or add it to the desktop. Well, it really don't make sense because when you open your start menu now, you have your li a app list right there. Pretty much, yeah. And it's all down there. You have well, not even like um. <laughs> oh, right there, yeah. Yeah, they have the app list right there, so there's no point in having it have your other metros like right beside it. So. Yeah, and then you, and then of course you have the like you can add like your documents, pictures, yep, as little, settings as well. So you can I don't know what that I don't I don't know what that did, but whatever that did, whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, you. I can, think that's a metro view, the one you click, but I don't know if you have any. No, like, I, you I deleted did, them all. I seen, I have nothing. Yeah, so that's the metro view, but you got rid of yours, so there's nothing to show. <laughs> that's why it was gray. <laughs> <laughs> My was like, please add an app. I'm like, nope. But I mean, yeah, I, I think Windows 10 has definitely got. It's a nice improvement. Like I said, I think because of the fact they're probably going to make Windows 10 permanent, they're not going to create a new operating no, that's why, system. That's why they're getting rid of one at a time, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is pretty much probably going to be the thing where this is get this is the operating system, and then it just gets incremental updates, and then it just improves over years. So, I mean, it'll probably... I don't know if it'll... It may get to the point where it might be just as good as Windows 7. I know some people love Windows 7, even with the fact they don't support it anymore. Mm -hmm. Some people will stand by Windows 7, and Windows 7 was a great operating system. Uh, but I think, you know, a lot of people give Windows 10, you know, some crap, you know, just because of the experiences when it first came out versus now, it's a major improvement. It's a lot mm -hmm. more optimized than what it was, at least to, at least for me in my experience. I'm not going to say it's fantastic, but it's it's getting there. So uh, proper updates. We are going to be a okay. I'm going to tell you that right now. So we'll but make it. We'll get there. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't. I think you are. I think you can get the app, Alexa app. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a way to get it get it i don't necessarily remember how but i did see that some there were some places that you can go to actually download the app and try it out i don't know if it's something i'll necessarily use um but it's a nice it's there's something nice for somebody you know who has alexa um and maybe is on their computer and they want to get alexa but they have like smart devices this is a good kind of alternative for that as well i think Definitely. it's a nice benefit uh for some people who may, maybe don't necessarily want to go spend 40 bucks on a on a dot and they just want but they want to have the alexa functionality this mm -hmm. is a good option for that because it'll just be right into the system. So if you already have smart devices, you already have your Alexa, you're done. Mm -hmm. And it's easy. So nice job on Microsoft for being able to team up with uh, Amazon on something like that. Yeah. Um, so and we're going to keep going with Microsoft uh, here because they've got also another article. This is also by Comic Book WWDG, the transition over here. So. Microsoft is going to be introducing what they call the Xbox All Access program. So basically what it is is that it's a two-year contract 
The way it works is that you have access to either the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X for either $25 or $35, or no, $22, and then $35, $35 yeah, right down here. Uh, if you go for the, of course, the Xbox One X, and you also get access to their services as well. And then after the two years, the console is yours. So basically, I think... If I, I feel like they've done something like this before. It sounds very familiar. Well, um, did they? I think they did it for like a college program or something, but it wasn't for the one. I think it was like the 360 back then. Oh, maybe, I might be wrong. Maybe I don't. I don't. I don't remember them ever going doing a program. Then again, I was. I've always like had my Xbox. <laughs> I don't know. I just still noticed the prices. How much you'd pay overall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you'd be paying eight hundred. Wait, no, we don't. Five twenty eight. For the one X, eight forty for the one X. That's almost double their yeah, that's, prices. That's pretty expensive, and for like two years of services, because that the service is like one twenty a piece, mm -hmm. and the console is three hundred. But it comes with Xbox Game Pass, right? Yeah. What is it? So that itself, that service is about ten dollars a month. Is it ten? Okay. Yeah, ten bucks a month. At, so at that's two hundred forty dollars in itself. So I guess that kind of brings it down, but. They're gonna have to make a profit off of somehow, so it's still like a hundred dollars more than normal price. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's not a bad idea in 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 theory because if somebody really wants, like, maybe they want to have the Xbox One S, but they can't fork out eight hundred and forty dollars to, you know, yeah, to get it right away. Because well, the X by itself, you bought it out of the out of the store, is four ninety nine, so five hundred. Mm -hmm. So you're tacking on about three hundred forty dollars extra mm -hmm. for a monthly payment option. Or, yeah, the biannually monthly payment yeah. option, which if you break down the Xbox Game Pass, which is ten dollars a month, you said that makes it for two years of Game Pass is two hundred forty dollars. So you're mm, looking right. at paying a hundred dollars more if you do it this way than if you know you had those you bought your Xbox One X for right. two years of Xbox Game Pass. Right. So that hundred dollars, it depends. You know, if you want, if it is it worth paying a hundred dollars more to get your payments broken down or not. That is true. Which you could do that. Or if you open a credit card at your bank or something, you usually get interest-free financing anyway. So so either way. <laughs> yeah. It's a good option for it, people. It's a good, I mean, yeah. But my only thing is, is I wonder, I wonder how they're necessarily going to actually do this. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that you can only do through Xbox, which I'm assuming is going to be a Microsoft Store thing. You have to go to the Microsoft Store in order to actually get this. So for people who shop, Either that, or you'd have to go on the Xbox or Microsoft website and purchase it from them, and they ship it to you. That's what I was thinking. But I wonder, because of the fact that you're doing monthly payments, it's got to be through a credit company. Yeah, they're going to probably yeah, capture your card info. Yeah, so it's, it's probably it'll, there's some way. Like, I mean, there's not the article really doesn't give you too much. It gives you like the prices, but it doesn't necessarily give you any more than that. It tells you, of course, what's included, which is going to be all their services for two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, in theory, it's not a bad idea if somebody shops on like the Microsoft Store um, mm -hmm. or they want to get their stuff through Microsoft. This is a good option for them. But I think it's also a good option for people wanting to buy Christmas or holiday gifts. You know, right. you can just say, hey, I don't I don't have the money to afford to get them like a five hundred dollar <laughs> console just, and games with it. So, right. you know what? I can just get them this and pay thirty two dollars a month and they'll have a new Xbox with games, games a whole game library everything. and everything. You're, you're golden. So. It's a good, like I said, it's a good concept. Um, of course, I don't, I don't know um, because I, it's probably going to be something where you have to do it through Microsoft in order to actually get mm -hmm. something like that. So if you're somebody who shops at, you know, a brick and mortar store, you know, you're gonna, if you already have like a credit card, you're just gonna go buy it mm -hmm. and just dig the financing that your whoever your bank provider has. So uh, I mean, they're they're kind of stepping into a market that might be a little bit tough for something like that. But it, it's not a it's not a bad idea. But it, I mean, I, I wonder how many people are going to be like, yeah, because I, I mean, this is I mean, you get a lot of stuff mm -hmm. for twenty two bucks a month or thirty five bucks a month. Yeah, I don't honestly see it being that big of an issue for them because they already sell Xboxes on their website. It's just another way to pay for it. Uh, yeah, okay. Because they, I mean, regardless, I can go to Microsoft's website and they'll sell me an Xbox if I buy it from them directly. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, shoot, twenty two bucks, thirty five bucks. It's probably. I'm pretty sure that would definitely be a lot cheaper than going through your bank, especially if it's if you're looking at like if you get an X and then you get all the stuff and then it's eight hundred forty. You're looking probably at maybe <sighs> a little bit more than that. Month, you're looking maybe. at yeah. I mean, unless you get an interest free, yes. True. Yeah. yeah, but you don't have to worry about 
they're giving you a flat rate, so you don't got to worry about yeah, interest just, if you go through Microsoft either. Yeah. So I, I think it, it'll, in other words, it'll more likely do well. Go, go buy it. Go buy it now. Yeah. I, I, but go sign up for it. Tell Microsoft you appreciate everything they do for you, <laughs> including Windows 8. Oh, God. And, this, and Vista, the best yeah. operating system. Could you make a um, – and then ask them if they could make a Surface version of a Chromebook. <laughs> no, they do. It's called the Surface Go. It's got Windows S no, and everything. But you, So you might not know this, but um, – if you buy a mic, a Windows S device, you can go into Play Store and pay um like it's fifty or hundred dollars more and, and turn I, it into a standard Windows Ten OS. Wow. I mean, yeah, I, I know you could do that, but don't look Microsoft, please. I'm begging you, do not go Chromebook way. No, you're right. Don't go Chromebook. Don't Chromebook. Go I will, back before the Chromebook. I will, Think game, back. I will game on Linux. Hey, before the Chromebook, remember Microsoft. Just make a new RT. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring up RT. That was worse. I'll take a Chromebook over RT any day. Golly, that was that was sad. <laughs> my God. I remember when I I had like one RT device and I never used it. I returned it. I had an RT and all I used it for was um on like trips and I would just use it to Skype or message people when I want and watch YouTube because right. I want a bigger screen. That was it. Oh my goodness. Like, and then I try to download games, but then I was like, the Windows Store is terrible back in Windows 8 days. Yeah, so Windows there's nothing Store had to download. Nothing in there. It's like, I remember when I, I mean, still they don't, like, for example, YouTube. They still don't have YouTube, but their apps are better mm -hmm. than when they first came out. Because I remember when I typed in YouTube and they had like the third party ones, mm -hmm. and you tried to open it up, there were so many ads on that thing. It was like, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I'm like, oh my God, stop with the ads for heaven's <laughs> sake. It's annoying. It's like, hey, you want to watch YouTube? Here's an ad for you. And then here's another ad on top of the ad that you just watched. Wait. It's like, stop it. Speaking of ads, did you all hear that um, Netflix, you're, oh, yeah. they're doing a test market for ads now because they are thinking of adding them back to the subs that your subscription does not mean you get ad free content. So they're basically doing because Hulu has that as well, where you can pay seven dollars and eight well eight bucks a month to have limited ads and like then fifteen and then there's no ads. It's is eight twelve uh -huh. and then seventeen. I think it's fifteen or seventeen if you do like a family plan. Okay, but Hulu is like that where it's eight bucks you get access to, of course, all the content, but there are going to be, like, limited ads that you can watch. Right. So they're probably going with something like that, which I don't know. I hate that. And I don't like ads. That's why I didn't. That's why I don't have cable. And then another thing that has been talked about recently, Twitch uh, Prime is getting rid of its no-ad um, feature. So yeah. a lot of uh, – I've read before I came up here that a lot of streamers are actually turning off their ad support wow. on their thing to, <laughs> you know – go against it and stuff and like yeah. twitch no they don't appreciate that <laughs> twitch is like how dare you we give you money and this is how you pay we us? shut you all down <laughs> we'll go down with you <laughs> we'll delete twitch itself <laughs> well, you'll never see it again Everybody's got to and, go the whole, and the only channel left will be jkt because yeah. he will keep those ads on i will keep them on <laughs> so twitch i'm here i'll keep the ad look drop an ad me, real me quick. and my me and my crooked acoustic phone will we'll keep it on all you have to do is send me an email and be like hey let me hook you up. James. I didn't have no idea that we were such sellouts. <laughs> God dang it. JKT sells out for, <laughs> for, for anything. No, no. You send me, if you send me a, a bag of ramen, you got uh, yourself you a got, deal. You got a deal. If you send me like a piece of bread, I'm loving you forever, man. It's going to be Donald's commercial all over again. <laughs> I'm loving it. Oh all God. right. On to the next. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so um, that's the Xbox. We're, yeah, we that's the Xbox. So we're gonna go ahead and go and talk about our last article. My God, look at us! I told you it was gonna be short. It wasn't gonna be long, but mm. it's gonna be short. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and let Ken talk about this one because this is something we're both excited for. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll let Ken, you know, go ahead and explain what it is that we're excited for. So go ahead, Ken. So of course, it is about the RTX cards that Nvidia has talked about, release dated, priced everything. Um, they actually are really high-end cards, and they are going to be the direct replacement for the 10 series. Um, they come with the ray tracing technology built in, which is really nice. That's a feature that helps with, you know, lighting, and it's a part of DirectX 12 and everything, so mm -hmm. that helps out. Um, they actually have the prices for these as well. Um, the 2070 is going to be 599. The 2080 will be 799. And, you know, for all those people who want to, you know, just have piles of money sitting in the corner, in their bed, you know, pillowcases, <laughs> whatever. Pocket change, in the couches. Yeah. Um, it's going to be eleven ninety nine for the 2080 Ti. 
Um, is not bad pricing. Yeah. Um, they're going to be um, launched, when is it, um, August 20th, I believe, or no, September, September 20th. 20th. September 20th for the uh, 2080 and 2080 Ti. I don't believe the 2070 has a release date as of yet. No, so but I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't be long after that, probably maybe the next month, a month, because I'm pretty sure they're going to they're gonna release these, they're going to release that before the holidays, mm -hmm. or maybe they'll release it during the holidays. As kind of like some like a bundle or a discount. Yeah. Um, but of course, these are the specifications for the RTX 2070, 2080, and 2080 Ti. So of course, they are using that Turing, Turing uh, versus Pascal. So you are mm -hmm. going to get a little bit of a, a higher boost clock. Uh, it looks like the founder Founders Edition is going to be overclocked. Um, and then you, of course, you have the regular RTX 2070. I don't know if this is just the default without like manufacturers touching it or not. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that must be what it is though. It's just yeah. the regular default. If you don't get like the founder's edition, it's just, or a basic card, I would say. So yeah, and they, of course they have now DDR6 <laughs> memory inside of them. Mm -hmm. So Which is, the me yes. memory speed is way higher because of it. Yep, everything. you're looking at, um, what is that about? Almost that's eight, eight GBPS, you're going up to 14. Yeah, that's about six additional gigs for memory speed. So that's gonna be really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, so. 28 yeah so it looks like if you go with like a founder's edition they're all going to be slightly overclocked mm -hmm. which it's funny because it does look like the 2080 is slightly faster than the ti i don't know yeah i don't know but i think a, maybe that's just because it has more memory in there uh, it's i don't know i'm not wait it's that's like, a little interesting i would have i guess we'll have to see the benchmarks for something like that because that is uh yeah once it's out <laughs> and everything mm -hmm. i want to see how well that does um between that and the 28 ti because if if honestly, if the 2080 is a better buy, I'll mm -hmm. go with the 2080. It's going to be more cost-effective buy, definitely. I mean, it's three gigs of memory more, and from what it's showing, the um, Founders Edition is actually faster than the 2080 mm -hmm. Ti. So. Yeah, another thing they also did, too, with the um, RTX series graphics cards, they also compared it to the Titan V. Now, I think it was the older version of the Titan V, not the new one that came out, because I think they announced, and I think it says a three new quadro line. Which are, yeah, I think these are not the newer ones. Um, but they are going to be the, I'm pretty sure they're the older Titan V cards because those cards did use ray tracing, but they were very, very expensive. They were almost like six grand. Mm -hmm. um, so they were comparing performance to that and saying that the graphics cards here are just as powerful. If not more powerful. If not more powerful than what you got with mm -hmm. those. So it actually is a, I'm actually very excited about that because I think the fact that we're getting, we're now in a day and age where our, the one single graphics card can do so much mm -hmm. that you don't need to necessarily do like SLI or buy really expensive cards. You can get these cards and still give performance to basically do whatever you want. Um, it almost begs the question: Is it worth even make like? Is it worth even making any more graphics cards? Because I mean, what more could you add to them? We gotta wait for that Intel card, you know. Oh yeah, Man, I forgot Intel's gotta. I gotta wait for Intel because they're gonna. We're gonna have not only GDR6, but we're gonna have Optane in there. Mm -hmm. So that's how they're gonna do it. Um, but, but um. But yeah, I'm excited to see these cards. I, I have a 1070 Ti, which it's a fantastic graphics card, but you know, I definitely want to upgrade to one of these. They actually have um, designs for the third party ones like MSI and everything online. They haven't announced really they, they don't have really like good. I don't believe they have a release date for those yet, but you know, that those MSI ones, they got RGB, so it's already um, I have to get those instead of NVIDIA. Yeah, the, the, the MSIs are pretty nice. I'll see if I can pull it up. Mass. <laughs> Is that where we're going after this? We're going to go to Mass? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go to Red Robin so I can feel like I'm in debt again. <laughs> it's just those milkshakes are expensive. Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you want? Can I get an Oreo milkshake? No! Can, that, can you put some uh, Twix sticks inside of it? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess this is only going to show for the 20, 2080 Ti, but this is uh, one of the graphics cards. I don't know they if have. they have any of the other ones shown yet. The old, the I don't think it does either because this is the first one they advertise on their website, but... Uh, this is going to be for the 2080 Ti. This is an MSI one. Uh, it has mm -hmm. RGB lights on the top and bottom. Man, RGB is blown up. I love RGB. RGB is the future. RGB is light. RGB is life. That's how we do it. Um, but yeah, so, you know, this is going to be the 2080 Ti. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. It's got your three fans. Uh, it's got some nice, supremely si silent technology, so you don't have to worry about Aah! when you're playing your games. You can hear it. You see that? You didn't even hear it. You can just hear the games. Yep, new thermal design. So I, I usually always wait for the first the benchmarks for these graphics cards, and then when manufacturer other manufacturers release it, like Aces, um, MSI, because they usually have better looking graphics cards. Of mm -hmm. course, the founders the founders editions to me weren't necessarily all that impressive. 
they it was sort of like a classic look for some reason. So I mean, it's not it's not an ugly. Thing. I mean, the ten the ten series founders editions look really nice, though. I will say. Yeah, the, the ten series. They like the nice. turbine look to it. And I, all. I like those. I yeah. like those a little bit better than I do the new ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not too big on the design of it. I mean, they're not bad, but I don't know. I, I think they. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna wait for the for the. We'll wait and see. Wait, no. wait, and see. wait for some reviews. See how it goes. Wait for those third parties. Then you make your choice. I am very excited to see those benchmarks. I'm really wondering. I wonder how the GPU performance is going to be for you know things, especially like gaming. Uh, now, if you guys are curious to know kind of what real tracing will actually look like, um, there's a video on YouTube that NVIDIA I think released mm-hmm. um, that shows it for the new Tomb Raider game. Because uh, there are going to be games that are going to be optimized with real tracing in there. Um, I think Tomb Raider was definitely one. Tomb Raider is one. What was it? I think I saw it. Was Deus PS6 up there? Mm, I don't No, I don't think so. But uh, there's me, a list of them we can yeah, probably look up too. Yeah, let me see. Um, Ray but, tracing capable but, games. Or, ooh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Um, Here's all the games. games for, yeah, so we, here we go. This is from VG247. Okay, I'll turn it off. Um, oh apparently my god. we have to turn off ad block. Oh, I gotta turn off my ad blocker. Oh god. Hold on, guys. You're one of those people? Oh my god, I know. What am I doing with my life? This is probably just um oh there you go. I figured it out. <laughs> there you go. Alright, but um as I was saying before, so there's a video that you guys can watch um on YouTube. It's showing off the new Tomb Raider game and kind of give you a good idea of what real tracing will actually look like um in an actual game. And I have to say, it looks amazing like the graphical performance number one the game looked really good like it looked almost like you were actually watching a movie mm-hmm. that's how real it, it looked because so, they use ray tracing in movies as well i believe too so yeah i believe so as well um so, so the fact that you know we the quality first the quality was really good and then the lighting was really good i think in the video it was like in mexico somewhere mm-hmm. i think in like i want to say it was maybe south america but it looked like it might have been mexico mm-hmm. and kind of just showing you how like certain spots had really like the lights were changing colors in like one area and then it was like completely dark in another one it really separated and gave you that realistic look um so i was uh and we'll go ahead and show you kind of the games that are going to be compatible with that as well but the it looked really amazing so if you guys really want to see what it looks like uh just go on youtube and search it up i think tomb raider ray tracing uh you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like so um, but as far as games, these are going to be the games that are going to be supported for the graphics cards to do ray tracing. So these are going to be the early adopter ones. Bigger ones are Shadow to Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus, okay, and um, Battlefield Five are the biggest ones. <laughs> biggest ones, That's I would be say. Um, then they have some other ones that will be coming out, I believe, down there later. So Ark, if you're in Ark, Ark Survival, Final Fantasy 15 will have it, which is already an amazing looking game. So yeah, imagine it. Yeah. Really nice. um, Hitman yep. 2 is a nice looking game as well. PUBG is supposed to have some re- use that feature in it. Or let's see. Uh, have we Happy Few, which is a game that's out now, is gonna have it. That's surprising. That's pretty cool though. So in front of ashes. Yeah. So that's about <laughs> the biggest ones, I would say. The other yeah, ones everybody really cares about. I mean, yeah. Who knows? Maybe they care about the other ones as well. Yeah, we care about all of them. Care, I care about all games. I'll play all games. Um, but yeah, so I mean, those are going to be all the games that are going to support it. Of course, these are going to be the ones that come first, and then you're going to have your other ones here afterwards. So I'm excited to see, you know, these graphics cards. I really am waiting for somebody to get their hands on it. I mean, you know, NVIDIA, if you want to, you know, slide some 2080 Ti's our way, you know, we'd be more than happy to review. Yeah, them. I'll put We've got here. the power. Hey, we can put your name. We can put you in the panhandle. We'll even do that. Yeah, for we you got video. you. Look, we'll we'll say thanks, Nvidia, for this beautiful sponsor. Look, I'm look twenty eighty Ti twenty eight. I'll even take a twenty seventy. Just just send one my way. I'll even send you my address. Mm-hmm. I'll send it to you. Just let let me know, Nvidia. I got you. We love you, Nvidia. I got a ten seventy Ti. Let me let me upgrade. Remember, we're here for you. Yes, we're here to help you help, help yourself. Us, help yourself. To our computer builds, mm-hmm. see how that works. Yeah, you gotta you gotta respect the bills, man. You gotta respect yeah. the bills. I'm turning back all. You gotta my put head. it in the queen. Oh God, Not the, no, <laughs> no. Okay, well then, if you're gonna call yours the queen, I have to call mine the king. What? It, it changed genders <laughs> too. <laughs> it, I'm sorry. I mean, it can't be queen number two. So right. It can be next in line. That's it, the it's air. The next it's Ken. the air. That's it's the, the name. next of Ken. When I get a bigger, bigger the next head. of Ken, that's his new name now. Yeah, next of Ken. 
There we go. When I get a bigger, better case, then I'll be like, Ken, it's time. You have a nicer case than me, okay? We, we, <laughs> we all know that. It's, it's not fair. 500 beam. No, that's bad. I want that case. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, if you had to get one, because I mean, let's face it, we're 2070. We all know we're probably not going to get that one. So the 2080 or 2080 Ti. Say, okay, so let's say the GPU performance was there was a slight bump, mm -hmm. but not a major bump from the 2080 to the 2080 Ti. You might as well put a little bit of money into the Ti. I mean, you're gonna it's gonna be a card that's gonna last you for like a decade. So I mean, that's true. With 11 gigs, I mean, what game do you know that takes up all 11 gigs of that? Of that beautiful i mean that would be the the biggest reason for me is the fact that it has a lot of vram so mm -hmm. if because i mean you saw that game i'm pretty sure as games take advantage of this stuff, technology it's going to require a lot more ram definitely so you I mean you're definitely future proofing yourself i mean for me i would of course go with the 2080 ti mm -hmm. um now again i'll see the benchmarks because i think i would say that because it has 11 gig versus 8 that could be the reason why the clock speed isn't as high because maybe mm -hmm. it doesn't need to run at a high clock speed to process all that because it's got enough VRAM to process all of the, all the textures and shadows. That's going to be my guess is the reason why you can see the 2080 Ti have a really, really high clock speed because it doesn't have as much RAM mm -hmm. uh, as the 2080 Ti. But of course, we'll see what uh, benchmarks show. Um, I wonder also how they're going to play with uh, like Ryzen, like Ryzen Intel chips as well. Because mm -hmm. um, I know, I think sometimes in the... The NVIDIA's, I think, favor Intel a little bit more than they do Ryzen. Yeah, usually. Um, if I remember correctly. And with AMD not releasing a new graphics card, AMD, please! Um, which I don't know if you've heard, but apparently the graphics cards that they are going to be releasing are only going to be comparable to a 1080, 1070, or 1060. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily know how I feel about that. Um Okay, because of course you know we all know sixty Vega sixty four Vega fifty two was not or Vega fifty six was not the most impressive card. Right. Um. I mean, if you were an Nvidia lover, I mean not Nvidia AMD lover, then it made sense to get it. But there's you know, better the, choices out there. There are the, the the Nvidia side had much better choices and they had much better pricing, especially the fact that. If you went, you only had a 580, which compar was comparable to a 1060, and then the Vega, which was comparable to your 1080, but you had nothing in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think first Ryzen, the Ryzen chips are fantastic, but if AMD is going to release graphics cards, they're going to have to, they're going to have to really step it up because if they release something that is only as good as the previous models, I mean that's better, mm -hmm. but your Nvidia still would have to leave in GPU performance. Definitely. And I think for people who maybe want to go all AMD systems, I'm not saying that necessarily if they release one that's like as fast as your 1080 or 1080 Ti, that's a bad thing mm -hmm. because those graphics cards are still powerful. So if they can release something, I think those graphics cards, if they say AMD does release them, I think those should have been the ones we should have had now mm -hmm. versus the ones that we've got. Because going from a 480 to a 580, you did get a slightly better boost clock, mm -hmm. but it wasn't enough to say, yeah, this is this is a massive improvement. So I think those graphics cards should have been the ones that we got. I don't know what AMD is going to do with GPUs, um, but I think if they are going to make the a new GPU, they definitely should make it either as good as what NVIDIA has now or mm -hmm. somehow make it better than what NVIDIA has now because I think that's how they're going to be able to get even more market share because um, their Ryzen chips have done great. So you know I have high expectations for their GPUs, but for right now, the NVIDIA does have a better performance to to price for me when mm -hmm. it comes down to their gpus because you're getting for the money you're spending you're definitely getting a much faster gpu um of course amd's got the budget you know game on lock so budget like graphics cards still is, please the yeah. 560 is great the 550 i never used it but the 560 was great i used the 560 that was a good mid-range card um but i would like to see amd you know take a crack at it see what they can do put a thread ripper in there no. <laughs> no. We're not going to do it. Yeah, I know. We have the new Threadripper GPU. What? It's a 32 What? 32 gigs? What do I need that for? My goodness. That thing would be... You know how expensive that would be to have everything Threadripper and i9? You know, that would be... Oof. Oof. This is now your CPU and your GPU at the same time. Yeah. Your, your games are going to be like 
hitting 500 frames per second for no reason. You're just gonna, it's gonna be an opening scene, it's gonna go, and then as soon as you get into a battle, it just drops one frame, and you're like, huh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I appreciate that. Um, but I don't know, you have any any thoughts? Because um, I know, because AMD hasn't released a graphics card in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any thoughts about, you know, the AMDs versus like the NVIDIAs. I've never used an AMD graphics card. So I have oh. no input, honestly, between the two of them. Oh. I like NVIDIA a lot, but. Yeah. NVIDIA's good. I like NVIDIA. I always root for the underdog. Like AMD's a big underdog. And I mean, they're starting to, you know, come. I mean, Intel's the biggest underdog. <laughs> They didn't have any car. They've been using the um the embedded <laughs> chips for how long? <laughs> They've been doing four core, four four threads all year. They're the biggest underdog. Yeah, the embedded chips. Everybody was like, "You're not gonna come out with a higher core processor," and they were like, <laughs> "You were wrong. You were wrong." Give us Intel's never gonna make good graphics. You're wrong again. Yeah, that, that's and what was it? 2020, 2021. They're gonna show it. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna show you what they're all about. I wonder how that's gonna be. Intel, Nvidia, and AMD all in the GPU market. That that's crazy. Yeah, but I I feel like I don't necessarily feel like Intel's is going to be geared to like gamers. I feel like it's going to be more so business and enthu like someone enthusiast than necessarily gaming. I don't I don't know. They may do it. We'll see. But I I don't know. I don't I don't feel like I mean or maybe it's a pure gaming card. Maybe I'm wrong and it's purely just for games. If you're a gamer, this is the card that you want to get. Mm -hmm. This is the card that you need. This is the card that you like as of now it's the rtx so yeah rtx is that's where we're going so um you're you are able to pre-order it so you except can, for the 2070 i don't yeah, think it's pre-orderable yet no not yet the 2080 so and 20 the 2080 yeah the 2080 and 2080 ti are pre-ordered um i would say <clears> if you if you can probably wait uh see what some benchmarks are see what um you know the main other manufacturers are gonna have because i would say those might be a little bit better um, of course, if you really want it, by all means, go for it. They are able to be pre-ordered, so if you guys are interested, just check out NVIDIA's website and pre-order those bad boys. Um, the pricing, again, is definitely not bad. Uh, GPUs are definitely coming down on pricing, so it's nothing ridiculous like it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited to see what the RTX graphics cards are going to be. I think this is a this is going to be it's going to be a game changer for a lot of different stuff, and then especially for games because now you're literally going to have a powerhouse. Over there, you're gonna have like an i9 or a Threadripper with a 2080 Ti. You're gonna be like, man, I'm good for the next 10 years. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> That's what you're gonna do. I have a friend, and she said that she was gonna build a computer. It was gonna be a god computer. <laughs> and her biggest thing, I asked her, I was like, you know, you know, what are you gonna do on it? She's like, eh, just play Call of Duty. And I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, it hurt me so bad because I was like, you know, if you say, what do you have in there? You're like, well, I got a Threadripper WX192650 with six, 128 gigs of DDR4 memory in the 2080. And they're like, well, what do you do on there? And you just say, I play Call of Duty. You know, people are, you're going to ask somebody, be like, oh, you stop spending all this money that I can't spend. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Finally. I have a reason to start buying stuff again because I'm interested in doing a new build. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of didn't know what to what to put, what to do. So, uh, But I think that's a great place to go ahead and end it. I think we covered all the topics. And, of course, that NVIDIA mm -hmm. is dope. So we're definitely interested to know what you guys think about the NVIDIA graphic cards. Um, if you guys are going to be pre-ordering them or you're going to be purchasing them, um, and if you are, which one do you, you guys want to go for? You want the 2070, 2080, or 2080 Ti? Um, so, of course, if you're watching us with, a, if you're watching us now live, thank you guys so much for joining us. We definitely appreciate it. We love doing these podcasts every Wednesday. Like I said, we do the podcast every Wednesday from starting off at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So. If you guys are not following us, make sure you guys are following us so that way mm -hmm. you know when we go live on Twitch. Sometimes we also go live on YouTube. Um, it normally just depends on how I'm feeling, but right now we just did Twitch, uh, and then this portion will be uploaded on YouTube as well. Um, if you guys are interested, you want to get to know Ken more, because King Ken's always active in his life. Check yeah. it down there in the social channel. Now, he only got one. That's all the one he needs. I don't need to post on it, actually. I don't post too much on it, so maybe I'll get into it. I'm supposed to say that. You're supposed to say I post every day. I, that's what I'm going to start doing. What do you yeah, mean? There you go. So make sure I'm you guys pledging to you. <laughs> you will see something all right, each he, day. He has the pledge. Don't know what, but you will see it. You'll see a meme, and that's it. 
That's it. That's all you need, though. <laughs> that's memes. the that's the that's life the, is fulfilled if you have a meme in it. That of course, some it, people's lives are memes. Like I mine. wake up every morning, <laughs> and the first thing I do is find a meme. When I find that meme. I begin my process. And then I go back to sleep because I've achieved my day. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> my day's over. I don't need to go to work. I already got paid for that meme. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but definitely check him out um, on Twitter if you guys are curious to know what he does in his spare time. Uh, of course, make sure you guys are following me everywhere else, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and also make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, until next time, guys, like I said, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, also, thank you, Tutorio Beats, and we will see you guys in the next podcast. Stay techy. Take it easy, y'all.